The experiments shown in this film set out to solve the problem first clearly stated by the mathematician von Neumann. Can a machine be constructed which can automatically make another exactly like itself? If a machine could act like the living cell you see here, so long as the parts needed for making more machines were available, it would go on reproducing itself, and so also would its progeny. Perhaps the demonstration you're going to see may throw light on the process of cell division or gene replication. A practical attempt to solve the problem has recently been made in a series of experiments by L and R Penrose. They began by making a kind of crystal that was formed in response to seeding or priming by a small part of itself. Each of these models, like those that follow, is simply made out of plywood. The pieces here are all alike, each has four hooks. Energy is supplied by horizontal agitation in a confined space, but as you see there, the units don't link up. A linked pair is added, and the result now is that all the pieces join together in response to the agitation. Again, in the neutral state, the units don't link up. If the seed has a different form, you'll see it's tipped to the left this time. Then the crystal faithfully copies the new pattern. The crystal's more like a living organism if it's made aperiodic, by having only two hooks on each unit. There are two kinds of unit here. They're arranged randomly, and as before, they don't link up unless they are primed. A live group is made of two link units and this is added to the others. The principle is no life except from life. Agitation causes the formation of a new live group wherever it's possible. A new group's appeared there on the right of the picture. The other one is the original seed. Now if the seed is tilted in the opposite direction, again it's faithfully copied, just as a mutant gene is copied. A more stable live group can be made from laminated units. As before, these units do not join up when they are in the neutral state. Each one's made of three bits of plywood pivoted at the center, as you can see here. And two of them are put together to form a live seed. This is introduced amongst the others and in response to agitation, we have perfect replicas of the seed. There's one of the new ones, a child. This is the original seed, the mother, and there's another child on the left. These experiments can be developed in a variety of ways. For instance, we can add a mechanism that releases hooks. And in its simplest form, this leads to what might be called a steady state. It can be demonstrated by using ordinary clothes pegs. As you see here, there are always two together, but it's a different pair each time. The structure assimilates food at one end and rejects it at the other. This, as you see, is child's play and something you can try for yourself at home. But it's not quite as simple as it looks. It takes a little bit of practice and the pegs have to be rather smooth so that they'll jump off. This, you see, represents a metabolic state. And the same kind of thing can be shown rather more exactly by a model that's made with levers. When the levers are arranged in a particular way, you can then get two of the units holding together, and again, food can be taken in at one end and rejected at the other, just in the same way as we saw with the clothes pegs. If this metabolic process is doubled, and made to work in opposite directions at the same time, it leads to reproduction. This model has two levers.
and the units can be hooked together at the side. We start with two of these units joined together and a third one is accepted and when a fourth one is added then the whole thing divides in the middle. You'll see that food can be accepted at either end and again the thing splits. These particular units can be joined side by side to form a complex. That seed has eight levers. Now two more units have been added. Then another one making a seventh. But it's not until the last unit is in place that the, there is a release and the whole thing divides in the middle. And so we get reproduction of this rather complicated machine. Perhaps you'd like to be convinced that mechanical reproduction, as it's been shown here, can be really automatic. These units are a little more complicated. As before, they won't join up when they are in the neutral condition. The live complex will have four possible programs controlled by the arrangement of the levers. And whatever program is chosen for the seed will determine the pattern of the other units. Here you see the live seed put in and through agitation you get joining up. This process takes a fairly long time but it's eventually complete and then you get splitting in the middle as before, a process resembling mitotic cell division. Now let's see this whole process over again. The live seed with its program is put in. One moment there, it looks as though the whole thing is going to fall to pieces, but in fact the process is successful and in the end you get division and reproduction. But why stop there? We can go on and make the creature indefinitely large, and many different kinds of unit can be combined. Here there are units that build a four-piece strip. Note the apparatus that prevents more than two units being added at each end. At the center of these, there's a hook with alternative tilting, and those other hooks unlock when three units are behind them. Here's a live strip which selects and catches its food. There it is. Now taking in a piece of food, it activates and incorporates the food in one motion. You'll notice, by the way, that it cannot accept more than two elements at either end just rejected one at that end, but it can take two more in at this end. And we get the process of splitting in the middle. Let's take a closer look at what is happening. There's the live strip of four, which will take in two more at each end. And at that stage, the whole thing splits into two. You'll notice after replication, the two strips repel each other. There's really no limit to the complexity and numerical size of these artificial creatures. The construction of their food is the limiting factor. Models capable of conjugation and recombination of programs have been made. And with these, both natural selection and evolution can eventually be artificially mimicked.